for this. Wonderful. So to start the recording, hello, everybody who's just joined us. Again, my name is Dylan Green. I'm a career coach with the Central UMKC Career Services team. I'm presenting today with Ashley Nance. And Ashley, if you want to just give a quick intro for yourself, and then we'll get into your actual intro. Yeah. Yep. Again, professional development manager. I am with the Block Career Center. We'll explain the differences between our two offices uh, later on in the presentation, but I'm just so happy you're here. Welcome to UMKC. Absolutely. There we go. All right. So a quick uh, brief bio of who I am. So I was actually born in Germany to military parents. And so I spent the first few months of my life um, abroad, but I grew up mo mostly in Iowa. I moved around a lot just because of the military, but um, my parents settled down in Iowa when I was about middle school. Um, I have a Chihuahua mix named Lucy. You can see her picture in the lower right hand corner. I'm obsessed with her. My partner, Matt, and I, we live in South KC, and feel free to call me Ashley through this whole thing. Uh, there's no need to say Miss Nance. Um, my education, I have a bachelor's degree in history from Central College. It's a small liberal arts in Iowa, and I got my master's degree in higher ed from KU, which kind of brought me down here to the Kansas City area. I have eight years-ish uh, <laughs> in career services. Um, I used to work at the University of Kansas in Lawrence, and I've been with UMKC Block Career Center since January 2021. I mostly work one-on-one -on -one with students, so um, I work with mostly business students in the Block School Management, but I do a lot of things behind the scene as well. So I run our alumni network, and I'm also the person behind our social media accounts. A uh, couple of interests, I have a personal goal to read 75 books this year, which um, I'm not quite there, but we'll see how far I get. Um, I really like to travel. I love mentoring. I love career services. Um, I'm particularly interested in how to make career services more equitable for our students. So uh, I have a keen interest in social justice and higher education as well. My first job was in Pizza Ranch. It's a small little mom and pop pizza place in a small town in Iowa. And I really loved it, actually. I worked there all through college as well. Awesome. Thanks, Ashley. So again, my name's Dylan Green. A little bit about myself. Um, this is a picture of me at work, actually. Um, our costs are actually less than that, less than five cents. They're free, technically provided in your, in your tuition, but that's the, the uh, fine print. Um, for myself, I also come from a military family, mostly grew up in kind of rural Illinois, small town. Pick a small town in the Midwest. You've seen one, you've seen them all. I'm from there. Uh, I've got two cats at home, Scarlett and Gordon. And I've actually been to seven foreign countries, but not Canada or Mexico. So I've always needed a plane to get uh, out of the US. Pronouns, he, him, his. Shout outs to Zoom for including that in my little uh, talking head here. And again, like you're welcome to call me Dylan, Mr. Green. It's a little formal, but whatever you're comfortable with, first name basis is fine for me. Um, I too got a bachelor's degree in history from a small liberal arts college. I went on to get my master's degree in history at UCM, just down the way in Warrensburg. And then maybe PhD, maybe Ed D, if I'm thinking more moving forward in administration stuff. Maybe I got to do some career prototyping of my own. We don't all just get it figured out once you graduate with that degree. That's why people like us exist to help give support. Um, I've got about five years uh, experience in higher ed, not including the um, part-time work that I did for my own undergrad years, working in the dean's office, like so many other people do. And I just joined the UMKC Career Services team in June of this year, so relatively new in this position, but I've been in the career field for quite a while. My favorite thing about the role is just helping folks get unstuck. There's tons of times when people think they're out of options, they have no further choices, and just a quick conversation, we can dive a little bit deeper to get you unstuck. And the best thing to do that is to just do something. Even if we're not sure what that is yet, we can typically brainstorm and find something really exciting to do that'll help you get unstuck. Interests, games, movies, fellowship, big fan of all the nerdy franchises. My shout out here to my wonderful uh, wife and child here when we visited the Hollywood Studios Galaxy's Edge Park. You can see uh, Stormtrooper uh, heckling us from the balcony. We were a big fan of that. Um, mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings, any history geek stuff. If you want to have a longer conversation about that, book an hour because I can go on and on. Same thing with like my master's thesis. I can go on and on about that. Uh, shout out to the KC Renfest coming up this fall. Cannot wait. My first job was a clerk, the catch-all job title for part-time workers in high school at good old Ideal Hardware in my hometown, which has since closed. So 
um, pour one out for old Ideal Hardware. Do want to shout out the Transfer Student Network. So all of you are kind of joining us today because you registered through RU Groups. RU Groups is also home to just about every other student organization, pre-professional organization based on hobbies. There's another one here for specifically transfer students. So if part of the reason you joined here today was because you were interested in some sort of communion with your uh, fellows, with your colleagues who are in kind of the same boat as you, we wanted to help make sure that that was uh, accessible in a virtual space, and then also for meet and greets. So you can register on RU Groups, find specific events in that group uh, on the RU Groups platform as well. We actually have a national transfer student week coming up in October. We're hoping to plan some events for that as well. We see the website here and then also the email, good old get involved at umkc.edu. All right, so a little bit about what we are going to cover today. Um, we're for sure going to tell you a lot about our office and the differences between um, the Block Career Center and the UMKC Career Services area. But we're also going to talk about what you should be thinking about now as a transfer student. So what's important? What do you need to know about your first semester career-wise at UMKC and just for your own professional career, right? We're going to talk a little bit about networking, give you some tips on how to do that well and, and really what networking actually is and what it might look like. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about resumes and how to really get that started if you haven't already. And then finally, also recruiting timelines. We're going to probably talk about recruiting timelines and interweave it um, throughout the whole presentation, but we'll talk about internships and what those look like and how you can start getting um, yourself out there with employers and applying for those as well. All right, so to get us started, um, we wanted to take a couple of minutes also to just get to know you. You, you just sat through two slides of what of who Dylan and I are. So um, in the chat, if you don't mind just saying your name, major, and year, um, that would be great. We just want to learn who is in the audience for us. And Dylan, I think we can go um, and continue talking while we're doing this too, and we can come back to it. All right. Um, and Dylan, do you want to cover like who we are? <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So um, we had kind of touched on uh, Ashley and I come from different offices with a shared purpose. Basically, we're both career professionals. We've got the same goals for moving you forward. But Ashley specifically moves out of the block center. So out of the actual block school for our business students, we have a special team of they're like our Navy SEALs for our business students, right? They are specifically trained to help y'all in your career readiness. The central team represented more on the left-hand side. We're up on the second floor of the Atterbury Center. We are kind of a catch-all for everybody. So if you're engineering, computer science, humanities, social science, I'm thinking STEM, I'm thinking just about everything outside of business, minus like the law school, for example, uh, we can help you there as well. And then as well, if you're like, well, I wanted to meet with this one person. I set up this appointment. It turns out my major's not covered under that person. We'll either find some time to meet with you to kind of designate that and help answer that question and then get you connected to the right office. It's not like there's a big sign on our doors that say, hey, wait, you can't come in unless you swipe your student ID and it matches our, our major matcher here. Um, so you can see our contact information here. Again, we're in the second floor of the Atterbury Center, nice and open space. And then the block side of the house is in suite 203 in the block heritage hall which is next to the block executive hall. Was that correct? It is. Okay, yep, it's awesome. Connected. Yeah. I'm learning. Awesome. Anything <laughs> else um, about the designation between our two teams? No, um, I just wanted to confirm and, and even maybe clarify even more. So the block school management is the hub really for all of our business majors as well as public administration majors. Um, so with business that includes things like um, accounting, finance, marketing, management, um, supply chain, uh, analytics, those type of degrees. And within public administration, it's also things like health administration and nonprofit administration within our school. So uh, whether you're an undergraduate or graduate school within our in our, um, our block school of management, um, you can come to the career center and get help with us. Awesome, well said. So a little bit more about what we actually do, and this is for all the teams on campus. Um, we really specialize in the one on one career coaching, we want to provide original tailored um, help depending on where you are in your professional goals and how we can get you from point A to point C eventually right. Um, so a lot of times that looks like resume and CV, 
But I want to stress we're not a transactional office, right? You don't just hand in your paper. We take some red ink to it. We give it back to you. So long. See you never. It's we work together to assess your goals to see why do you need this resume? What's the difference between a resume and a CV, which is a great conversation to have? Uh, what is a cover letter as well? Not a whole lot of people uh, get taught how to write cover letters at all, or if they do, not really great effective cover letters, we're there to supplement that as well. And then if you're thinking about the benefits of moving on to another degree, a graduate or professional program, we can help you figure out the pros and cons of that. What's the cost to benefit ratio? And then, okay, you've made your decision. Fantastic. Proud of you. How do we get you there? What do you actually need to prepare in terms of your materials? We also talk about interview prep. We do mock interviews. We'll actually uh, schedule mock interviews with ourselves or with employer partners, depending on like if there's an event going on or somebody's available. So not a whole lot of times people feel really comfortable in a job interview. That's great. We don't expect you of that yet. It's very much a practice makes perfect skills. So we want to provide the opportunity to practice that before you're sitting in the hot seat for that potential internship or full-time position. Uh, we also talk about salary negotiation and how to navigate a job offer. What are the different sorts of benefits you can expect to find? How are professionals in this field at this particular skill level typically paid? Is the offer that you're looking at matching that? Or is it above or below? And is there some wiggle room then to uh, navigate that? We can help talk you through that as well. Uh, major exploration, internship and job search. Some people think, okay, I'm going to go into this particular major. And so I'm going to graduate and do that. So like for me, I'm going to major in history. I'm going to go do history. Well, I got a history degree and I went on to do career coaching. I didn't major in career coaching. So a lot of times, depending on your major, there's a wide variety of options you never considered before. We can help you navigate that search. And then also if you're like, well, I feel like maybe I'm a chemistry major now. Maybe I'm wanting to explore more of the psychology side of the house. Up to you, right? We can talk through what things you can expect to see in the job market, in your academic journey, professional school opportunities afterward, et cetera. Um, and then we also offer our professional wardrobe studio. So not a whole lot of people know about this. I want to make sure everybody is aware. Our professional wardrobe studio is a chance for uh, MKC students to get free business professional attire from us. It's donation-based. And we do not take donations like the Salvation Army or Goodwill. Shout outs to them. Really cheap. Sometimes trendy clothing. Maybe more like grandpa suit from the 70s. We're not going to offer that there. We want to only make sure that everything we have to offer our students is on par with what's to be expected in a modern professional uh, workplace as well. So you come in there. I believe there's a limit of five items that you can take. And so you just come in, you'll book an appointment with us through Handshake. We'll set aside some time to actually visit the studio. It's just like going to a mini uh, JCPenney or something like that. We've got racks and you're welcome to fill up your bag with five items. We'll check and make sure. And then you're on your way with your free stuff. Uh, we also have tons of events we put on. Career fairs are big. I want to shout out next week, actually, on Wednesday. We're having an on-campus part-time and work-study career fair that's going to be outside the Atterbury Center. So if you're thinking of finding an on-campus position or a work-study position, or even maybe a position off-campus, but part-time, all of those will be offered. And I also want to shout out, if you do qualify for work-study, the Central Career Team is actually hiring for a couple of positions. So clearly you've got the gumption to, you know, take an extra step for your career prep. Maybe you'd like some specific training on career management from us. I think that'd be great, but that's just me throwing that out there. I'm a little bit biased. We Do also the pitch offer, when you can, Dylan. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah, right. And a great thing, this is recorded. If we can send this out a lot before uh, Wednesday, that'd be crucial. Um, we also offer information sessions kind of like this, different presentations or chances to even network with employers. Like I believe we've got Lockton coming around for an information session here uh, pretty quick. Ashley, what's the specific date for that? Do you know off the top of your head? Oh, let me let me open up my calendar and I can tell you in like five seconds. Sorry to um, put you what, on the spot. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. What Bill, um, what Dylan is uh, referring to is a coffee and career series that um, our our office hosts in Block Heritage Hall, but all students are invited to. Um, so the specific one that he's talking about is one on August thirty first. But these coffee and career sessions, they are very much like a casual information session. So um, we didn't want necessarily employers to just hang around on campus with just a table and their, their swag to give you. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it was something that's maybe more engaging, still includes free stuff, 
including food, um, but is something that allows you to, I think, meet them in a more authentic way. And so the Coffee and Career Series is just, um, like I said, a way for you to get to know employers and what opportunities that they have. Specifically locked in, I'll, I'll even talk a little bit more about this. They're an insurance brokerage, actually, that, uh, again, hires all students, but they are located right on the plaza. So that's a cool thing about UMKC Career Services is that we're smack dab in the middle of a pretty vibrant economic area, right? So we are not kidding when we say that we get hundreds of jobs every single day from employers that want to hire our students. Um, Dylan and I are both on teams that we have to go and improve those things. So um, it's it's something that employers want to hire you and they want to have you on their teams. And so we want to, of course, do our best to make sure that you're hearing about those things as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. So information sessions aren't just necessarily you sit down and you listen to somebody talk at you for an hour. It could be a really cool opportunity to get some networking, to ask, you know, locked and I haven't heard of this company before. What's it really like to work there? What are the positions open? That sounds like something I'd be interested in exploring or just as valuably, maybe not. And so I have that information now and I'm wanting to move forward, but I mean, hey, shout outs to Locked and good for them. They're getting in the recording because they uh, booked a, a coffee and career event so early in the semester. We also do presentations, workshops, anything to say, you know, I'd love to maybe set up a one-on-one -on -one career coaching session, but also maybe getting together with other like-minded individuals to really dive into how to navigate a job fair, for instance. We've got a couple of those coming up, resume prep, interviewing, et cetera. Those are all going to be on Handshake, which we'll talk more about coming up. Several resources are also uh, tied into uh, Handshake and our career services tab there. We've got Interstride, which is specifically for a lot of our international students to look for different uh, companies for um, hiring very specific jobs for them. There are a couple more hoops that our international students have to jump through a lot of times, so that's there for them. Uh, job scan is a way to, it's really cool actually, I haven't played with it enough. So you're able to put in a job description and you're able to actually look at your resume, scan that and see how it matches to the job description and how it actually fits in with getting past applicant tracking software. Um, Ashley, is that all correct? Did I did I sell that enough? Okay, fabulous. yeah, it, it pretty much it. Yeah, and we pay for the pre premium subscription for students, which means that um, under a normal free free account, you'd only get five scans. With the premium um, prescription subscription, uh, you get unlimited scans, and you also get additional like guidance um, that you can you can provide there. Nice, awesome. Big interview is really cool as well. So we talked about mock interviews. Say you're, you've are you got an interview coming up and you just can't get in for a mock interview quick enough. Big interview is a virtual platform where you can actually look up different uh, questions for interviews asked by interview coaches. And not only do they ask you the question and you, know, you think of what an answer could be, it provides examples on how to answer the question effectively. It looks out for what employers are looking for. You can actually record yourself answering the questions. You can see, oh, well, maybe when I talk, I play with my beard a little bit too much. I want to be mindful of that. Or uh, maybe I fidget a lot whenever I'm answering. Or maybe I'm saying um a lot and I don't hear that myself when I'm talking, right? So it can give you that chance to record yourself, kind of review yourself, and then make sure that whenever you're going on to that opportunity, you're addressing those uh, potential issues. Not only that, but it gets very specific. There's not just tell me about yourself. Why do you want to work here? What are your strengths and weaknesses? You can say, I'm looking to go to dental school. I know I've got an interview coming up for that. You can go in there and say, I want to find an admissions interview for dental programs. And it'll ask you questions that could possibly come up on that particular interview. Uh, first hand is another one where I'm not super familiar with. And Ashley, I think you did such a good job explaining it last time. Would you mind stepping in for this one again? Sure thing. Yeah. So first hand is actually a, uh, again, a resource that we uh, provide a premium subscription for for students. And what it is, is that it's a website that provides a lot of really great comprehensive career guides on a variety of different industries. So um, of course, like I, I know a lot about the business industries in there because that's what I work with um, all the time, but there's um, career guides that one walk you through what is it like to work in marketing, for example? What is it like to work in business analytics, whatever that might be? And it, it shows you here are these different career options and here's what you can maybe do with that, but also here's what that looks like. So here's what it means to be a marketing coordinator. Here's what it means to be a human resources manager, not just provide that as an option for you. Um, something else I really like about at first hand is that they have fantastic career or company guides 
Um, they provide really great rankings on top companies. They even have like a whole ranking on top internships uh, based on a variety of different information. And it's just really good to help you prepare for interactions with companies as well. They have fantastic interview guides, actually based on industry, but also based on company, as well as salary information. Of course, their salary information is gonna be um, broad, right? It's not gonna necessarily be focused to UMKC, um, but it's gonna give you at least a good range of what can you expect to make if you want to be a marketing coordinator or a human resources manager or what have you. Um, so it's really great for just general career education. Fabulous. Awesome. Very cool. So uh, the last thing we have on the slide here is Parker Dewey. Parker Dewey is another new one that we've added recently. Parker Dewey is basically a foundation that is all about the idea of micro internships. So we'll talk more about internships coming up, but typically they can last several weeks or maybe even as long as a semester or a summer. For a micro internship, it might just be a certain amount of hours or maybe just a week or two, right? It allows you the opportunity to kind of test drive this particular industry, given a certain project, get ingratiated into that particular team. And then you can have that knowledge and that data to say, okay, I really like that. I feel more confident, confident moving forward to maybe larger opportunities, or maybe I feel really good about this company. I enjoyed this experience. It helps with the networking aspect as well. Again, just as valuably, uh, maybe being a project manager isn't exactly what I thought it would be based on my own preconceived notions. I like this aspect of it. I didn't like this so much. Let's take this data and move forward in a more concentrated uh, sort of a, a path moving forward. So I love the idea of this, and we're definitely interested in getting connected more between our employer partners on there and our students. So if you're interested in something like that, that could just be more of a test drive, not as much of a full commitment to a full internship, definitely look into Parker Dewey and we can help you navigate all of these resources and all of these things if you have any questions moving forward. Okay, so Handshake is something we've uh, mentioned a couple times uh, before, but we want to actually, of course, explain it. So Handshake is our career management platform. And you might be thinking, I have no idea what that means. It's basically where everything that we do in career services is housed. Um, so as a student, you actually already have an account, most likely. And so what you just have to do is activate it. Um, usually we, well, not usually, we do work with the registrar and take basically as soon all as as soon as you enroll all of your information and upload it into our system. So it's a pretty seamless process for you to activate your account as a student. Um, so you would just log in with your SSO, umkc.joinhandshake.com. And here are all of the things that you can do with it. I know Dylan kind of touched on some of this, but um, we're, we're there for employer con um, connections and relationships. So we have so many different employers, like I said, who are interested in hiring our students. And so you can check out employer profiles and see, of course, who they are and what type of work they do. You can see what jobs they provide. You can see what events they're attending coming up. But you can actually message them directly. And I know that might seem intimidating, but recruiters will also connect with you directly through Handshake. And so it's a way for you to just be able to message them, I think, and um, have some open communication as well. It's also where we post all of our jobs. So whether it is a part-time job, an on-campus um, position, an internship, a full-time job, any lead that we get from an employer, we post it onto Handshake. And so if you are actively thinking about an internship or wanting to get um, engaged off campus or on campus in a, in a professional experience, Handshake is going to be your best friend for that. It's also where you can schedule appointments with a career coach, no matter what office it is. So you can um, you can see all of our calendars there. So if you're a block student, you would see all of the career coaches and, and the blocks um, career center. If you're a non-block student, you would see all of the UMKC career coaches availability. And you can schedule an appointment based on really any type of career topic we, we could say. So I listed some there talking about a resume or a CV, talking about a cover letter and what that is and how that might be applicable to your application, um, practicing interviewing skills with like a practice or mock interview, internship and job search, just developing a strategy for that and how to get started for that, um, graduate applications, job offer, salary negotiations, major exploration. Um, I will say uh, from my, my calendar personally and what I work with with a lot of students, my most common appointments are resumes. And then also navigating career options and just um, helping you kind of think deeper about what skills and strengths you have and what you like doing and how those maybe correlate to a career choice for you. And so that's a lot of what I talk about with students. 
Um, you can also go to Handshake to see all of our upcoming career fairs. We're going to talk a little bit more about them in this presentation, but if you want to know about details for those fairs and as well as registration and how to get um, how to save your spot as a student and also to see all of the employers that are attending, all of that information is on Handshake. You'll also be able to see all of our upcoming workshops and events. So both of our offices we do our own professional development workshops. So if you're thinking, I don't know if I have enough time to go to a scheduled appointment or I'm not sure if that's the right fit for me, that's perfectly fine. We have workshops that you can attend in more of a group setting about different topics. So resumes, how to make the most of Handshake, how to interview well, all those different types of workshops. And then finally, we also host events that are not necessarily career fairs. Um, career fairs are these large events that maybe have 60 to 75 to 100 employers. And it's a very, I think, economic way for a student to um, basically take all the resources and see a bunch of employers at once, right? But we also host networking events. Um, we often do this as um, part of maybe an industry or a subject area. Um, I know, of course, in the block school, we do very business heavy topics. Um, so we'll have like, for example, a, an accounting networking night, but we'll have different industry panels uh, in the fall as well. Our office also facilitates what are called on-campus interviews. Um, so what these are um, is if you apply for a position through Handshake and the employer says, hey, I have a great connection with UMKC, I wanna interview students on campus, we actually help facilitate that for you. So you don't have to go off campus to have an interview with a company. Um, you can do your first round interviews either in the Block School or in the um, Central UMKC Career Services Office, depending on what that job is. And then we talked about resources earlier, but all of those resources we talked about are on Handshake. So you can access them anytime, 24 seven, from the comfort of your bedroom. And I did wanna make clear, you should not have to pay anything extra for these things. We pay for them, they're completely free for students. All right, so let's chat about what's important now and what you should be thinking about as a transfer student. So of course, class starts next week. I'm sure all of you are thinking about your academics too, um, but especially if you're coming in as maybe a junior or even a senior who graduates in December or graduates in May, we wanna make sure that you know about your career center too and know about what resources are available for um, helping you get started on that internship or job search. Um, so we of course talked about the differences between our career centers. Um, you can navigate to which ones are, are best for you according to your academic plan, but also, of course, just making sure that you're aware of Handshake, Big Interview, Job Scan, all those resources that we chatted about earlier. So use those resources. Um, take some time to explore what is on Handshake and um, what, what all those resources are. We actually have a lot more resources than what we even talked about today. Um, the ones that we talked about earlier are kind of our five biggest ones, but we have a lot of other articles and blogs and websites um, that you can look at as a student as well. And then I just also wanna talk about building a network. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this earlier, but um, relationships take time and networking and using that network to find a job or internship takes time, but it is important. A lot of jobs nowadays get filled by who you know. And so we wanna make sure that you're feeling confident about one, how to do that <laughs> and how to do it in a way that's going to be a best fit for you and your own, your own personal style, right? Um, we're going to talk about how to get involved. So getting involved on campus or even off campus, doing something outside your academics is going to be crucial. Um, this is something that employers care about. Um, it could be a part-time position. It could be a student organization. It could be volunteer experience. Um, employers just care. How are you building your skill sets outside your academics? And what does that look like? And how have you kind of been engaged in your community? And then finally, we're going to talk about internships because this is the best way to land a job. Um, there are a lot of companies now that offer full-time jobs from their internship pool, not just in business, actually. Um, this is really common in a lot of areas outside that as well. I know, of course, I'm speaking from the block side, but um, this is something that can be applicable to a lot of different areas, uh, depending on, of course, your interests. All right. Dylan, you can you can take this part. I'd love to, but Zoom's like, hey, we don't want to unmute you just now. Okay, oh, so we yeah. talked about, it wouldn't be a real virtual presentation without tech issues, right? right. Uh, so we uh, shouted out our career fairs coming up. So you'll notice this particular list, also great time to screenshot. No, these are all posted in Handshake as well, but if you wanted like a little uh, concise list, here it is. 
Note that it only goes until early October, right? And we do career fairs all year long, right? We just couldn't make this particular slide any busier. So we want to shout out what's coming up immediately, kind of our heavy fair season, and then what you can expect also in the spring with more uh, fairs, because we do them all year round, except for summer, really. Um, we'll kick it off again next week with our work study on campus and part-time jobs fair. You're welcome to register for any of these on Handshake, and it's very easy because Handshake already has all of your student information. You just say I'm interested in going to this. I will say it's not necessarily a commitment. If something comes up, you can't make it, not a huge deal, um, but it is nice in order to register and make sure you can say, okay, I'm putting in this extra effort to say, I want to make this investment in my career journey, even if it's just to go walk around. It's not a commitment to talk to 10 employers. It's not a commitment to land an interview. It's just there to attend and see what's out there, right? And if you look at the list of employers for each of these fairs, you'll see that we've got quite a wide array of different industries and employers represented at any one of these, really. Uh, take Accounting Networking Night, for example, right? Yes, all of those employers will be interested in accounting positions, but I mean, one employer is not going to be the same as the other. So you'll be able to hear about different company cultures, see what you like about it, what maybe you are more curious about, and then move forward in a way that works best for you. Again, shout outs for uh, our office as well for next week. We're looking to hire. So I will be there in attendance as a worker and attendee. So I'll be wearing a couple different hats that day. Uh, bigger fairs coming up in mid-September. Um, our in-person business science and engineering industry fair is coming up. That uh, evening is our accounting career fair. And then that next day on Friday is our virtual business science and engineering industry fair. Uh, Handshake was awesome whenever the you know what hit and they said, hey, we're going to go ahead and move to a virtual model for career fairs and not make anybody pay any extra students, staff, employers, anything. So we wanted to continue to make sure that it remained accessible if anybody is a little bit more comfortable in a space like this, a Zoom breakout session. We've got an in-person health science and life sciences career fair. I believe that one's also being maybe uh, added into more of a humanities side of the house as well in order to make it that much more inclusive. Mm -hmm. Again, these are flexible, so you're always going to be able to check the most up-to-date version of these in Handshake. And again, we offer a virtual version of that as well. Check the times. They're usually starting kind of later in the morning, going to the early afternoon, unless it's maybe a little bit more targeted, something like accounting. I would imagine a lot of those students um, might be able to leave their full-time jobs that they're already involved in a little bit early to attend a career fair like this. And again, hopefully most of the classes are over by that point. And you'll be able to attend that one too. And we've got the locations for all these as well. And again, to mirror uh, Ashley's notions earlier about getting involved, employers love to see involved students. I remember working with a particular employer who was really excited whenever he saw a resume that showed student involvement in athletics. Because you know, if that athlete has a competitive GPA on there and they're involved as maybe the team captain or even just a player, um, on a given sports team, you know they know how to manage their time wisely, right? Their academics, their extracurriculars, making sure they're able to maintain that time on the field and maintain their GPA for those uh, particular scholarships and involvement. So any kind of student organizations, it does not have to be necessarily relevant to your uh, future career goals. Oftentimes, every time actually, you're able to build transferable skills that any employer wants to see. That could be on and off campus activities as well. We are so blessed to be in the middle of a very vibrant uh, urban community. Plenty of off campus activities, volunteering opportunities as well. Again, if it's not necessarily directly relevant to what you wanna do, a lot of times employers love to see that on a resume just to show your character. You're willing to commit a little bit of your time toward the Special Olympics or March of Dimes or Relay for Life just because you care that much about getting involved, giving back to your community. Also research opportunities. If you're interested at all in doing some maybe uh, undergraduate research, we actually have an entire team on campus for that. Chat with your faculty members. Oftentimes those faculty, they're looking for students to oftentimes take that initiative and move forward and say, I'm really interested in this particular subject. I'd love to learn more about it and conduct my own research. Faculty, that's part of the reason they love their job so much is fostering that curiosity in their students. Um, as to the whys, it's fairly obvious to us, but in case anybody needs it spelled out very specifically, it shows these transferable skills and it helps build them. Your leadership, team building, your commitment, your curiosity, again, uh, we love that. 
It helps you find your niche as well. I didn't know that I would really be a good fit with success advising, coaching, that interpersonal connectivity until I worked in the dean's office. And then I continue to work in higher ed myself. Same thing with most people who find some kind of great work uh, on campus or that involvement in something that's on campus or off campus. It helps you build more of yourself in a professional and personal life. And again, a great way to build your network, which we'll talk more about the ins and outs of networking coming up. Networking is not a dirty word. It's actually a lot of fun. And even now in this virtual space, we're sharing with others, you're networking. Congratulations. Didn't know you knew that. We did want to pause here kind of in the middle of the presentation, just very briefly to shout out the chat again. In case we haven't talked about something you're really interested in seeing, we do have a little bit more to go because we're a little past the halfway point at this point. Um, but we just wanted to remind you, if you do have any questions or you wanted to hear anything more specific about given topics, you're welcome to implement the chat feature. And we can either shout it out in the middle of the presentation or say, hey, we're about to get to it or answer it in the chat directly. Ashley, anything to add to that? No, you got it. Okay, fabulous. And now on to networking. Yeah. So like Dylan said, networking is not a dirty word, but I wanted to put maybe some feelers out in the crowd. How many of you like to network? And go ahead and you can say it in the chat or you can use a reaction button. And while we're waiting for that, I can kind of also, if someone does love, uh, love to LinkedIn, I love to connect. Andy sharing his LinkedIn, I love it. Well, the reason why I ask is that networking is for everybody, um, but it definitely depends on the style that you want to do, right? And I think a lot of times students think of networking as maybe phony or inauthentic, where they're not able to um, maybe be their own selves. And, and a lot of times, especially before COVID, um, networking events were in person and it was hard to do small talk and it was intimidating for a lot of students. And so we love to dispel that myth in, in career services. Um, and I really love to talk to students about how it's important to network, it's important to create those relationships, but it's also good to find the best way of how to do that. And we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, and the first one that obviously comes to mind are a lot of those in-person networking events, right? So we have those big career fairs that are coming up. Um, that's, of course, a way that you can directly meet those employers that are actively hiring right now. They have a job posting that is open. They're looking for someone to fill it. So that's more of like an immediate, here's what it, uh, jobs are open. Here's how you can network to get that type of connection built, right? But like I mentioned earlier, we also host networking events. So we bring in employers and even sometimes alumni, current students, from different industries as a way for students to network as well. Networking is also a key way that you can start to explore different areas. Um, so whether you're actively job searching or not, I would strongly encourage you to get involved with a lot of these things and say yes to these opportunities because you never know what you can learn, to be honest. Um, even again, if you're not actively um, looking for a job, you can still learn about these different career options. You can still learn about what's out there and learn maybe about a new employer that. Um, you never heard about before, right? And so, of course, networking events are a way to do that. Um, we talked about student orgs earlier, but that is, of course, a way that you can start basically meeting like-minded people, right? Um, people, whether it's a student organization that's based on an affinity or based on an industry or based on a topic that you really love, like a hobby, it's a way for you to connect, connect with your peers. And believe it or not, your peers are your network. Um, there's so many students that, that we work with who go on to work with a former classmate or to be managed by a former classmate or to manage a former classmate and, and just being on those same teams, especially in Kansas City, where um, so many of our students come from and, and leave to go on to opportunities in this in this great state or this great metro area, I guess, not just state. Um, but it's a, it's been a fantastic way to, to get to know just other people that are around your same peer level who are interested in the same things. But then also, I always encourage students to go to presenters and panelists. So not just even within career services, but our university hosts presenters and panels all the time throughout the semester on a variety of different topics. Some of them could be very specific to your academic area. Some of them could just be general learning topics and a way for you to um, expand your comfort zone and kind of learn about something new, right? But that's, again, another way that you can put yourself out there and learn from other people. 
I think that's a key part of networking too, is that it's about learning and it's about learning other people's stories, but also maybe sharing your own and developing a genuine connection from there. We said this at the beginning, but relationships take time. And when you're starting to go through a job search or an internship search, um, it's it's hard for someone to just say, hey, I'm looking for this job, will you refer me? If they don't know you, right? Um, a lot of times that, that makes um, someone not as <laughs> accessible, right? And so uh, you definitely wanna think about how can I start building my network now for when I am going to be actively job searching? One last strategy that we wanted to talk about is something called informational interviews. And I actually um, prefer more of a, of a phrase like career conversations. Um, and informational interviewing is a strategy uh, that you can take to basically interview someone about their career, but not about a job. It's a way for you to gather information and gather maybe information about a particular career path or a company or a job that they are working in. Um, when we talk about informational interviewing uh, with students, I always really encourage students to um, to kind of look for people that are maybe doing something that they already know about, or maybe you at a dream are are working at a dream company, something where students ha has said, "Well, I just don't know if I know anybody in this area." Let's make it a stretch goal and let let's look for an information um, informational interviewing that way. And of course, by making that one connection, by taking that time and that effort to reach out and learn from someone else, there are a lot of opportunities that can come your way from those things. I've had students so many times um, make really fantastic connections and get a job from the connections that they've made with informational interviews and career conversations. So yeah, I, I think it's a fantastic thing that you should think about, but you might also be thinking, well, how do I do this? This sounds great, Ashley. Um, there, here are some tips that we have for how to do this well. Um, I will always tell you the first, you just wanna be polite and respectful, um, but more importantly, you wanna make it super easy for the person that want to help you, right? So be self-aware about what they might be thinking on their end in terms of how busy they might be, of course. Um, is it easy for them to answer the questions that you're posing them uh, or posing to them? And so just make it as easy as possible for them to connect back with you. Um, provide your calendar, for example, or a couple of dates that they're, that you're able to be free to have a conversation with them and um, just make it short and concise when you're when you are talking to them. When in doubt, I would say err on being more formal. Of course, being a stranger, being a stranger, you might not know them, of course, right? And so um, I would just err on the side of maybe being a little bit more conservative and formal with your language. Um, don't use casual text. Don't use um, more like maybe even texting type of lingo. Um, definitely err on the side of caution with that. When you are in at a place where you want to start networking with someone or reaching out to someone and getting to know them better, think ahead about how you want to introduce yourself. So we have a term in career services called elevator pitch. And an elevator pitch is this kind of idea of thinking about what you'd say about yourself or how you introduce yourself if you had a minute elevator ride with the CEO of your dream company or the CEO of whatever thing is cool to you, right? Think about how you would want to introduce yourself. And that's really important to think about because whether you are talking to someone through LinkedIn or talking to them in person, practicing how to introduce yourself and what you want to say is going to be an, an important life skill. Um, not just if it's something that you are actively networking with and going out on your own, it's going to be something you'll have to do in, in any workplace as well. Of course, if you're meeting them in person, just make sure that you use a good handshake, you are mindful of your posture, that you're looking engaged, that you're using good eye contact, and then also don't wing it. So when you are networking, and especially when you're start, um, starting to reach out to people, make sure that you're doing the research on who this company is, who this person is, what roles they have. Um, again, plan as much as you can, come up with questions on your own, take that initiative to be the person who is, who is really, really planning ahead on this. And of course, practice what you want to say to them and make sure that you have maybe even a script in your head about what's going to what you want to learn from this. Finally, I always say, and this is actually a really great skill to have. And again, no matter what workforce you go into, listen and listen actively and very carefully. I think it's very easy when you're in a networking situation to maybe just black out and, and automatically just stop listening because you're nervous or anxious and you're thinking about what you're going to say next, right? But I would caution you to avoid that if you can and really think about or, or listen to what the other person is saying and what they're contributing to the conversation. 
Well said. Awesome. So in order to help you along this goal, um, we're going to pass everybody out some phone books and you're going to start cold calling. <laughs> no, right? It's the 21st century. We've got way better tools for this, including the LinkedIn alumni tool, which is for some reason a really great secret that not a whole lot of people know about. We're here to spread the knowledge of this. So every school that has a LinkedIn page, which is most of them, if not all accredited institutions, have a tab on them called alumni that's highlighted here. And so that highlights all of the different alumni from that school who are active on LinkedIn. This particular screen grab says about uh, 69,000. It's actually up closer to, if not surpassing, 75,000 at this point. So quite a few people out there who are at least in some way affiliated with taking classes at UMKC. If this is your graduate program, check your undergrad school as well. That exists. If you're thinking about a graduate program, this is an opportunity to connect with alumni from those programs as well. Any school you're looking at now, in your past or in your future, has a page like this. And instead of thumbing through 75,000 folks, you can narrow it down based on where they live, where they work, what they do in terms of their current role, what they studied. So you can look at uh, folks who have graduated with the same degree as you. Another two uh, modifiers on this are their skills, so the different skills they have on their LinkedIn profile, and then also how you're connected. So if you're on LinkedIn already, you have a bunch of connections, chances are you're connected with somebody else affiliated with UMKC, right? If you aren't, that's okay. That just means that you have more opportunity to expand that network. So you might have a couple folks who are kind of first degree connections, people you're immediately, let's call friends, social media term. You've got even more, exponentially more, who are friend of a friend level. So it'll show you those folks as well. And you can reach out and say, hey, I see you know Dylan Green from the career office. I just heard a presentation from him and Ashley about uh, career management during our transfer boot camp. And then you are starting a conversation. It also shows folks who are even farther removed from you in that case. That's going to be the vast majority of folks, just because we can't know 75,000 people directly. It'd be really cool if we could, but we just can't. So this is one of those great opportunities to say, I can look through this. I can find people with relevant interests and really cool positions that I didn't know you could do with this particular degree, and I want to reach out to them. The great thing about LinkedIn is it's first and foremost a networking tool. And so if somebody's on this site and they're not interested in networking, they can remove the option to connect. So you never have to worry about, okay, if I connect with this person or I message them, am I bothering them? If the option is there, they're open to it. And research shows that over 90% of graduates are interested in helping somebody from their institution and their career development goals. As far as the current students who are getting that support, that's closer to like 15%. So clearly there's a gap there in between potential mentors who want to help you along your journey, and folks who are getting that actual support. So feel free to use this tool as much as possible and come to us for any help you need on building your LinkedIn and navigating it properly. I can touch on these two. Um, so briefly, I know we're running out of time. It seems like we never have enough time for these types of things. Um, but we we mentioned internships earlier. So we wanted to give a quick clarification about what those look like and um, how common they are for a lot of our students. Um, so summer in internships um, most often happen during the summertime, but they can absolutely happen during the semester as well. Uh, for summer internships, they are often full time, so 40 hours a week, and they can last anywhere from eight to 12 weeks during the summertime. Interim, interim internships are actually much more, um, I think, kind of flexible. So you can work part time um, to fit around your school schedule, and they can range from weeks to years in length, depending on the company and how uh, well you fit there and how much you like it there. So it, it really is dependent on your own personal um, and professional journey. Most are paid. Um, they, this can, of course, vary by industry, job, or organization. So a lot of these internships can be $8 an hour to $32 an hour. It just really depends on the function of your role and what types of skills you're using. Why you should do an internship? We mentioned this at the beginning, but it's absolutely the best way to get a full-time position. Um, many, many companies uh, offer full-time offers, um, excuse me, to students who complete an internship with them. It's of course a way that you can build valuable skills. It's how you can actually take what you're learning in the classroom and apply it in a real world situation, right? But also it can help you decide on a career. I even have an old personal situation from this. I, I mentioned earlier that I majored in history. I did an internship with the British Museum and it taught me a lot about what I didn't want in a career. I didn't want to work with 
old stuff. I wanted to work with people. And, and so it was, it was so enlightening for me. And I don't know if I would have got that experience or, or got that maybe clarification uh, without that experience. Why do you need to know this now? Organizations tend to hire in the early fall semester for next summer internships. So if you are interested in a spring 2023 or summer 2023 internship, now is the time to start looking for those positions in Handshake. We had employers actually start looking um, or start loading all of their internships actually in mid-July. And so um, definitely a lot of those are, are being built up right now and imported right now. And so they're open and you can start looking at all of those options right now. But it also just means that you need to start planning and preparing um, now with your schedule and your resources yeah. and what this might look like for you if this is an option that you want to pursue. I will. I just a quick reminder to mute yourself in case uh, you're not presenting because this is recorded. All right. Moving on to resume. Absolutely. So we'll chat. Um, We've got a little bit of time left. I do want to make sure we chat about resumes, just some best practices. And again, this is your own original document. So the best practice for this is always going to be to come and see a career coach to make sure that you're getting the best advice for your own journey, your goals, and how your document can reflect your experience and how you can get there. Main things I look for on resumes are readability, organization, um, basically clarity and consistency as well. So I want nice clean lines throughout. I want everything to be well organized, a good balance of white space versus text. So you don't have a big chunk of uh, white space on there that could have been used to better market yourself. At this point, we're moving away from more high school experience, including your high school diploma, any part-time jobs. And if that does away with a chunk of your resume, that's okay. We've talked about ways to build up those sections through involvement and potential um, career opportunities. Clear distinctions between sections, very appropriate use of bolding. If everything's bolding, it sticks out for the wrong reasons. If uh, key pieces are bolded, that draws the eye a little bit better. We're going to use reverse chronological order in a given section. So if we look at the work experience on this particular example, we see the most recent experience is up at the top. The least recent is down at the bottom. Um, we're going to keep to one page with font size somewhere in between 10 and a half and 12 for kind of your body text. And then margins, I've seen them be as small as half an inch. I wouldn't push it past there. Kind of rule of thumb with the three quarter of an inch to a full inch but sometimes we need a little bit more room. So as, not, as long as it doesn't look too busy, we're okay. The six to seven second catch is basically referring to whenever an employer sees a stack of resumes and they're trying to get through them quickly. If I can discern in just those six or seven seconds that your resume meets with what I'm looking for and it warrants a second more detailed look, great. But I've seen plenty of resumes who don't make it and I see templates used. I see it's very disorganized or it's not relevant and into the recycling bin, it'll go. So let's meet and let's chat about how to avoid that particular scenario. In your education section, so we've all got something in common with our UMKC experience. We're not going to abbreviate UMKC. We'll spell it out like we have here. Very specific with the hyphen as well. No spaces on either side of the hyphen. Um, and we don't need the location because it's in the name. Some people like to keep it consistent and say Kansas City, Missouri. Other people say, well, that kind of seems redundant to me. Valid. It's your document. All we can do is provide suggestions. You're going to spell out your entire degree, not BA, not BS, BSBA, whatever. Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, like we have here. So Bachelor of Art, Science, or Business Administration in this particular area or emphasis in this particular area. No S. So oftentimes you'll see like bachelor's degree, associate's degree. That's the shorthand possessive. We're going to get rid of that and spell it out entirely. And again, not abbreviate here. For the date, we're looking for the expected grad date or your actual grad date that's already transpired. So we have like expected May 2023 for one here and then May 2019 for the other. For GPAs, we're thinking competitive. So for undergraduate, a competitive GPA is 3.0 or above. For graduate, it's 3.5 or above as well. Um, for any of these, we see like honors college. So anything else you can maybe add a bullet point here or there. Oftentimes you can move that to an honors and award section too. Um, and then we have here, if you have not yet declared a major, you'll write it as exploratory, interest in, et cetera. Now, as we're transfer students, so some of us may have associate's degrees we'll bring in with us. Degrees can go on here. Some of us don't. We just have some previous class experience based on, um, oh, hi, Alexa, based on um, 
what sort of classes we've taken. Maybe we knocked out our gen eds at a previous institution. So what we're doing there is we're going to say thanks so much for that experience, but it's not going to make it onto the resume. We are only going to put the um, universities that we are in the process of earning the degree from or we have the degree from. Now, if you were president of SGA back there, you can still draw upon that. That's valid. But for education, we're only looking for degrees. So like for me, I did a year of graduate work in Colorado. I didn't get a degree from there. It just gave me some credits toward my eventual master's. That's not on my resume. Here's some common resume headings that since we're kind of short on time, I'll leave you to look through. Basically, there anything there that allows you to market yourself a little bit more, always with the question in mind, is this relevant to the job I'm applying for? So is it necessary to include relevant coursework in, say, my history program for a career coach role? Not necessarily, right? Um, but since I've had a couple career coach or career advising roles in my past, those are going to go in like relevant work experience or my internship that I may have had if it's relevant. Um, Ashley's internship at the British Museum, super cool. If you're going into like public history, top of the list, right? If we're going into career advising, maybe not at the top, but still super cool to show off that internship experience, depending on when it was and what kind of skills you practiced there. Honors and awards, work experience can include things that are relevant or not. We just want to prioritize what's really at the top. And if we look down toward the bottom, publications, posters, et cetera, these are more oftentimes associated with CVs, which are really academic documents. And that's their own presentation, which I'm happy to answer questions about. But for right now, since we're pressed for time, we'll leave that mostly for CVs and then specifically academic resumes. Okay. So I was like, oh, I was uh, on mute as well. Um, so it happens, um, right? Yeah, one of the key things that you'll want to include on your resume are bullet points that actually talk a little bit more about what you did in a particular experience or job that's on your on your resume. Um, this is actually really common to include in things like work experience, uh, sometimes things like volunteer experience. Again, you just want to think about the relevancy for that job, right? So a couple of points about um, bullet points. Um, they don't need to be full sentences, so you don't need to have punctuation. You really want to make sure that these are pretty concise, so you can aim for one full line, but no longer than two lines. For every bullet point, you want to make sure that you start with a strong action verb. Um, so things like collaborate or communicated with or handled or managed, those are all good verbs to start with. But you want to also make sure you're keeping tense in mind. If it's a present task or position, you would have it be in present tense. If it's a past position or responsibility, past tense. You always want to think about how you can quantify your work and the impact of your role. And so a good example of this that I always like to talk about with students is, let's say that you were responsible for allocating a budget, whether it be with a student organization or uh, your current job, being able to showcase whether you allocated $10 worth of a budget versus $10,000 worth of a budget is a big difference, right? So include numbers when you can. Uh, this can also apply to places where you maybe increased revenue or increased uh, membership in something. Think about those things and think about, again, the impact of your work and what you accomplished in that job. Make sure that you have a purpose to each bullet point. Be intentional about what you provide there. But also when you are specifically tailoring this to a role, use the job description to your advantage. So use keywords from that job description uh, to describe your experiences as well. So a good formula to remember this is just skill. So what skill did you use plus task on how you actually demonstrated that skill? plus the results of your work. And again, Dylan and I do this every day. So we're happy to chat with you about what this looks like. It is a practice start. It's not something that we expect for you to know right away. It can be hard. So come chat with us because we can help you build these things. All right, so some things to avoid, um, just to be kind of quick on this. Um, absolutely, I would say avoid a template when you can. Um, you can see also that the example that we have on the right side has big blocks of text. Um, color on your resume, they use icons. You want to avoid a lot of those things. We haven't mentioned applicant tracking systems yet, I don't think, but um, these things that you have on your resume can actually cause a lot of problems with applicant tracking systems. Um, applicant tracking systems are the computers that nearly every employer who collects online resumes uses to track and filter out quote unquote good resumes that meet the qualifications versus not as good resumes who don't meet the qualifications. And sometimes ATS do not pick up on these things. And sometimes they look at pictures and colors and columns and graphics and they 
basically mess all of your formatting up and, and it's not read as well for these ATS systems. Other things that you absolutely want to take off your resume. You do not need a social security number. You do not need student ID number. You do not need relationship status, your age, your country of origin, children, or anything that's more personal in nature, like hobbies or interests, things that you love to do. Uh, this is very much focused on the, the professional experiences that you have and the skill sets you can bring to the bring to the position. Absolutely well said. And just to shout out how icky this particular resume is, it's so distracting that a lot of people don't catch that they misspelled references and one of their interests is wine. So yeah. of things to avoid, this is a great example. So some finishing touches, um, of course, you want to just make it perfect. And part of that also make, is making sure that your formatting is consistent. Um, but also don't be the only one to review it. Get many eyes on this document. A question was actually asked earlier, how many times should I update my resume? I mean, Dylan and I would tell you like every week, but, uh, but of course that's not realistic, right? So I always tell students at least once a semester is a good habit to get into. Um, absolutely. When you are professional and, and working out in the world too, I would say good Every quarter is probably a good job, a good way to do it. Or every time you do something super cool, um, because then you can remember all the super cool things about that task or responsibility or accomplishment and put it on your document. You always, of course, want to make sure that you're tailoring it well. So again, just use JobScan. Um, JobScan scans those application materials and scans that job description and helps you find out where you can bring in more of those keywords. Make sure that you're submitting it in a way that's going to get read. So always submit it as a PDF when you are applying to an application and save it as something simple. So first name, last name, underscore resume works perfect. And then we kind of mentioned this update it regularly, um, but it's also okay to have a master document of everything that you've ever done. That is five, 10 pages long. That's okay. But again, you want to think about tailoring it to the specific application and not having that be maybe more than one one to two pages depending on your area. Awesome. So, and I want to be conscious of time. This is kind of the last slide before we jump into questions for y'all. So mm -hmm. if anybody's joining us from your uh, lunch hour, we appreciate your time. This is not going for much longer. If you absolutely have to leave, we understand we're not going to take it personally, um, but I do want to touch on this, what employers are actually looking for. So if you're thinking about the best skills to represent on your resume to say, you know, how can I make sure that this particular recruiter or this organization, whoever wrote this job description is going to make sure that I get their time of day. Oftentimes the job description is a great start. And then also recognizing that employers want folks with these particular skills. So if you've got bullet points that are well-crafted and can demonstrate things like problem-solving skills, nine out of 10 employers want people with problem-solving skills immediately. That's, you know, percent of respondents, 91.2. It's huge. The ability to work in a team. You might not like working as a member of a team. Um, I think of a lot of our technology folks who they get their chance to do their witchcraft and their wizardry on their computers and make the world go around technologically, but you'll still have to report as a member of a team and make sure you're contributing to that overall goal. We see things like communication skills, leadership, 75% of positions out there are not direct manager and leadership roles, but you'll still have to practice leadership skills there. Detail oriented, if you put your detail oriented on your resume and I can find a typo super quick, I'm gonna call you out on it and we're gonna fix it together. So I'll do it with constructive criticism and love. We see towards the bottom, tactfulness, creativity, fluency in a foreign language, not particularly necessary for each and every um, opportunity out there. It is a great marketable skill depending on where you're at, um, but just, you know, if you don't have that yet, that's okay. Chances are fine that you're going to do just fine looking out for uh, potential opportunities. If you do have that, it might not be at the top of an employer's list, but it is out there depending on your industry and the opportunity out there. And without further ado, that brings us to the end of the presentation. So we want to say thank you so much for attending with us today, whether it was over your lunch hour or a nice uh, relaxing overcast Friday afternoon. Um, this was a blast for us. At least I can say that from my point of view. It was a pleasure meeting everybody. And um, if you have any questions, please, you have our information. You have the General Career Center's information here. I'm willing to stay on for a while to answer any questions. Okay. We'll go ahead and pause the recording whenever we get a chance. But again, thank you. And uh, Ashley, anything else to sign us off? No, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to UMKC. Absolutely.